Good morning, my dear students. In my previous video, we discussed about a very important combination of resistors. Okay, how we are supposed to find out the equivalent resistance if uh, resistors, if uh, number of resistors are connected in series and number of resistors are connected in parallel. This concept we discussed. In today's video session, we shall discuss a very important concept of current electricity that is Kirchhoff's rules of electric circuit. Generally, an electric circuit contains a number of resistors and cells. Sometimes they are connected, they are interconnected, okay, in a very complicated way, okay. To solve such complicated circuits, Kirchhoff has given two laws, okay. So, one law is called as Kirchhoff's current law, another law is called as Kirchhoff's voltage law. Let us now discuss in detail Kirchhoff's laws of electric circuit, okay. Kirchhoff's laws of electric circuit. Okay, there are two laws of Kirchhoff's. First law is called as Kirchhoff's current law. Current law. In short, it is called as KCL. Okay. KCL, K stands for Kirchhoff, C stands for current and L stands for law. Okay, Kirchhoff's current law. Okay, and this law is also called as junction law. Junction law. Junction is a place where more than two paths meet. Okay, according to Kirchhoff's current law, the algebraic sum, the algebraic sum of currents, currents, meeting at a point meeting at a point in a electrical circuit in a electric circuit is equal to is equal to zero okay so according to this statement, the algebraic sum of currents meeting at a point, meeting at a point, what is that point is called as junction, okay, meeting at a junction in a electric circuit is equal to 0, this is the statement, okay. So according to this statement, let us discuss one illustration, with the help of illustration we can understand the statement very easily, okay. See here, let us consider one point, say this point is O, okay, and this point is connected with many conductors, okay. So some, uh, some conductors, th uh, through some conductors current is entering, say it is I1, and say current is leaving I2 from the junction, and I3 current is entering. Now, let us call it as I4, I4 is also entering and I5 is leaving, okay. See, if I consider this point O as a junction, some currents are entering. See here, I1 is entering and I3 is entering, I4 is entering. I2 and I5 are leaving the junction. It means some currents are entering the junction, some currents are leaving the junction. But according to this statement, the algebraic sum is there. Algebra algebraic sum means uh, we are supposed to consider the direction okay even though electric current is a scalar quantity in this case we are supposed to consider its direction how we are supposed to consider its direction we shall make a sign convention if current is entering the junction we shall take it as positive if current is leaving the junction then we shall take it as negative okay it is our sign convention current entering the junction is taken as positive Current leaving the junction is taken as negative. Current entering is equal to positive. And current leaving, leaving the junction, leaving the 
junction is taken as negative this is sign convention for junction law okay and see here how many currents are entering the junction i1 is entering i2 is leaving i3 is entering i4 is also entering okay therefore i1 is entering plus i3 is entering and i4 is entering okay and current leaving the junction see here i2 is leaving and i5 is leaving current leaving are taken as negative therefore minus i2 and minus i5 equal to 0 see the statement the algebraic sum the algebraic sum okay of currents meeting at a point or junction in an electric circuit is equal to 0 okay i have applied kirchhoff's current law to this circuit current law i have applied okay therefore i1 plus i3 plus i4 is equal to i2 plus i5 this way also i can enter i can write i1 i3 i4 are current entering the junction current entering okay is equal to i2 and i5 i2 and i5 current leaving the junction current leaving the junction leaving the junction therefore kirchhoff's current law i can also treat this way current entering the junction must be equal to current leaving the junction this is also one statement okay and this kirchhoff's current law works on the principle of law of conservation of charge it means i1 current is entering the junction i5 current is leaving the junction okay the number of charges that enters the junction and the number of charges that leave the junction must be same because according to law of conservation of charge charge can either be created nor be destroyed but it can be transferred okay or for an isolated system the total number of charge must be equal to constant understand so it works on the principle of law of conservation of charge law of conservation of charge okay so note down these very important points okay this is illustration current entering is taken as positive current leaving the junction is taken as negative okay and according to this illustration current entering must be equal to current leaving the junction okay this is also one statement of kcl okay or this is also the statement of kcl okay and this kcl works on the principle of conservation of charge okay so these are the very important points of kirchhoff's current one more illustration for uh, kcl see here these are the resistors okay let us call it as i1 this is i2 and this is i3 this is i4 and this is i5 once again let us consider this point as o o is a junction okay many currents are okay some currents are entering the junction and some currents are leaving the junction okay so according to kcl current entering current entering must be equal to current leaving current leaving the junction see here i1 current is leaving the junction i2 is also leaving the junction i3 is entering and the current entering the junction is taken as positive see here i4 current is also leaving i5 current is entering therefore it is plus i5 is equal to leaving the junction see here i1 is leaving okay and uh, if i consider i1 as negative since it is leaving minus i1 and i2 is also leaving therefore minus i2 and i3 is entering i4 is leaving therefore minus i4 is equal to 0 okay so how many currents are there i5 till i5 i1 i2 i3 i4 i5 
and all the currents which sign convention I have written and the algebraic sum of the currents meeting at a junction must be equal to 0. This is the statement and uh, with the help of this statement also I can write I3 plus I5 is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I4. See here these currents are entering the junction and the, these currents are leaving the junction. Okay, So this is how we are supposed to solve the complicated circuits. Okay. So let us take one example also, numerical example, numerical, see here, two ampere, two ampere, one ampere, okay this is I and uh, okay this is 1.5 ampere calculate I calculate I see here let us consider this as a junction 2 ampere current 2 ampere current is entering the junction therefore 2 ampere plus 2 ampere is 4 ampere okay so 4 ampere current enters the junction and according to the statement current has to leave the junction how much amount of entering how much amount of current is entering same amount of current has to leave the junction therefore 4 ampere current is leaving 4 ampere current from this point to this point the current remains constant okay because there is no place to go okay the number of charges from this point to this point has to remain same because no place is there to go for charge Therefore, from this point to this point, okay, between the junction, the current remains constant. Therefore, here 4 ampere, till this point, the current is going to be 4 ampere, okay. In that 4 ampere, if I consider this as a junction, 1 ampere current is leaving the junction. 1 ampere current is leaving the junction. How much amount of current is remaining? 3 ampere current is leaving. Therefore, from this point, 3 ampere current has to go, okay. It means... 4 ampere is entering the junction and 1 ampere is going by this way. How much amount of current has to go by this way? 3 ampere. Okay. And 3 ampere current. From this point to this point, it is a junction. From this point to this point, 3 ampere current has to remain. Okay. And in that 3 ampere, 1.5 ampere current is going by this way. Okay. Then how much amount of current has to go by this way? 1.5. Because... This, if I consider this as a junction, how much amount of current is entering? 3 ampere current is entering. In that 3 ampere current, how much current is leaving the junction? 1.5 is leaving. Okay. Then how much current has to go by this way? 1.5. Therefore, I is equal to, I is equal to 1.5 ampere. Okay. So, this is how we are supposed to find out. We are supposed to solve the current. Okay. By using KCL. Okay, now we shall go for Kirchhoff's voltage rule. Kirchhoff's voltage rule. Or it is also called as law. Kirchhoff's voltage law. In short, I can write it as KVL. As KCL was current law, KVL is voltage law. And this law is also called as loop law, Kirchhoff's loop law, because it is applicable at loop, okay. Uh, the statement for Kirchhoff's voltage law, statement, in any closed circuit, in any closed circuit or loop, loop means closed, okay. The algebraic sum of the algebraic sum of EMFs and and voltage drops voltage drops must be equal to must be equal to zero. Okay, it follows follows 
law of conservation of law of conservation of energy because voltage drop is there voltage is nothing but potential okay and the potential is nothing but what work done okay and work done ultimately results what energy therefore it, it works on the principle of law of conservation of energy okay remember this point so let us now understand kvl that is a kirchhoff's voltage law with the help of this illustration before we shall go for illustration we must we must understand the sign conventions okay and in different books different types of sign conventions have been given okay so we shall consider one easy sign conventions to uh, solve this complicated circuit okay see here if you want to travel from a to b b to d d to c and c to a it makes one loop c consider one loop here a b d c a this is one loop okay while traveling if you find positive terminal of the cell okay then take that emf as 10 volt okay if you find positive terminal of the cell okay you consider this voltage as 10 volt if you find a negative terminal of the cell then take it as negative okay see here for example you are traveling from a to b while traveling you find higher potential here okay if you find higher potential then consider that potential as positive okay this is one po first point second point if you are going along with current take it as positive okay if you going along see here from b to d if you want to travel by this way you consider this current i2 as positive or if current is coming against you okay coming in front of you take it as negative for example from d you are traveling to c this way from b to d d to c you are supposed to travel while traveling from d to c you find current i1 against you opposite to you it means you are traveling by this way from a to b you traveled b to d you traveled d to c if you want to travel this way the current is against you take this current as negative okay these are the sign conventions so first point while applying you will understand uh, first point higher potential to lower higher to lower is positive and lower to higher is lower to higher is negative in some books it is reverse actually from higher to lower it is taken as negative lower to higher it is taken as positive not necessary you can consider this way also because uh, you find positive terminal of the battery therefore I, I you have to take uh, you can take positive and current along is taken as positive and current opposite is taken as negative and in uh, many books i have read rise in potential is taken as positive and fall in potential is taken as negative they have given this way also you can consider okay now we shall apply these sign conventions to solve that illustration okay so solution so first we shall apply kvl to this loop a b d c a applying kvl to loop a b d c a see here a b d c a it is one loop okay this first loop and according to kvl what is kvl the algebraic sum of emfs and voltage drops across the loop must be equal to zero okay you start from this point okay you are going by this way what you find positive terminal of the cell therefore consider that as positive 10 volt then again you come to b point b to d point see here i2 current is there no resistor is there therefore no voltage drop from d to c you find i1 current is opposite to you therefore current multiplied by resistance gives you what voltage drop because v is equal to i into r v is equal to i into r while traveling from d to c current is i1 throughout the junction it is going to be constant i mean between the junction the current is going to be constant i1 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 from c to d the current is constant it is i1 and resistance is how much 3 
and resistance multiplied by current gives you what resistance multiplied by current gives you what voltage drop therefore how much voltage drop across this resistor it is 3 i1 plus 3 i1 or minus 3 i1 very simple it is minus 3 i1 because current is against you therefore i will write it as minus 3 i1 and uh, you come to this point okay how much is this volt this is actually 4 volt how much volt 4 volt 4 volt is positive or negative you are going by this way and you find positive terminal therefore it is plus 4 and you reach C and C2 again you are supposed to travel to A therefore you are going along with the current I2 I2 multiplied by 2 I mean voltage uh, current multiplied by resistance gives you what current uh, sorry voltage therefore it is 2 I2 is equal to 0 some algebraic sum of EMFs and voltage drops across any closed loop must be equal to 0 okay therefore 10 plus 4 is it is 14 minus 3 i1 plus 2 i2 is equal to 0 i will rewrite this equation 3 i1 minus 2 i2 is equal to 14 let us call it as equation 1 this is our first equation Okay, next applying KVL to loop second loop. This is second loop. Okay, C C D F E C C D F E C. This is second loop. Okay, you start from this point. Okay, and again you are supposed to come back to same point, then it is going to make one loop okay while traveling what you find negative terminal of the cell therefore it is minus 4 volt minus 4 this way you are going this way you are going therefore you are going along with current therefore current multiplied by resistance gives you voltage therefore 3 into i1 plus 3 into i1 see here it was minus 3 i1 in first case because you were going against the current and now you are going along with current therefore i have taken it as positive okay you reach d and d to f f to e e to c again you are traveling see here c from d to c there is no junction point therefore between the junction current is going to remain constant therefore here also current is i3 here also current is i3 okay from d to c the current is going to be i3 therefore current multiplied by resistance gives you what voltage therefore it is 1 i1 is equal to sorry 1 i3 is equal to 0 again i will rewrite this equation 3 i1 plus i3 is equal to 4 let us call it as equation 2 see here in equation 1 i1 and i2 is there in equation 2 i1 and i3 is there three unknown currents are there i1 i2 and i3 therefore we need one more equation to solve these equations these equations okay for that what i do is i will take this point okay applying applying kcl kcl means kirchhoff's current law at junction d that is d junction see here at d junction current i2 is entering i1 is entering i3 is leaving and according to junction rule current entering the junction must be equal to current leaving the junction therefore i1 plus i2 is equal to i3 this is equation number 3 okay see here if i substitute equation 3 in 2 okay the entire equation i am going to get is in terms of i1 and i2 only because my first equation is in terms of i1 and i2 only therefore i have to make these arrangements putting putting 3 in 2 3 i1 plus i3 is there in place of i3 i am i am supposed to write i1 plus i2 is equal to 4 okay and 3 i1 plus i1 plus i1 it is 3 4 i1 plus i2 is equal to 4 let us call it as equation 4 this is our equation fourth equation see here equation 4 contains i1 and i2 
equation 3 contains 3 and uh, sorry i1 and i2 therefore with these equations we can find out either i1 or i2 okay but remember here 2 i2 is there and here only i2 is there what i am supposed to do again i have to multiply equation 4 with 2 then minus is there therefore i am supposed to add equation 4 multiplied by 2 and added with 1 okay remember this equation 4 is multiplied with 2 and added with 1 so it is 8 i1 plus 2 i2 is equal to 4 to the 8 okay and uh, this equation is added with what equation 1 equation 1 is how much it is 3 i1 minus 2 i2 is equal to 14 see 8 plus 3 is 11 i1 2 i2 2 i2 cancels and 8 plus 14 is 22 therefore i1 is equal to how much it is 2 ampere now i know the value of i1 okay again this i1 value i will substitute in equation 1 putting let us call it as equation 5 putting 5 in 1 so it is 3 i1 value is how much 2 minus 2 i2 is equal to 14 so 3 2 is 6 minus 2 i2 is equal to 14 okay i will erase this one okay so 6 minus 14 is equal to 2 i2 and 6 minus 14 is it is minus 8 is equal to 2 i2 and i2 is equal to how much it is minus 4 ampere three two minus 2 i2 is equal to 14 6 minus 2 i2 is equal to 14 okay and putting let us call it as 6 putting 5 and 6 in 3 see here i1 is how much i1 is 2 ampere and i2 is how much it is minus 4 ampere is equal to i3 is how much it is unknown therefore i3 is equal to minus 2 ampere okay see here if i substitute i1 as 2 ampere and i2 as 4 and minus 4 ampere 2 minus 4 is how much it is minus 2 minus 2 ampere is equal to minus 2 ampere okay so this is how we are supposed to calculate the currents now we know i1 i2 and i3 values